take a few minutes break and try to make these uh, backing boards that'll sit on the inside of the scarf joint on the bottoms to strengthen it uh, generally especially as we're maneuvering these sheets on and off the boat and uh, measuring to the joint from the stern seven ten and a half which would be that, that'd be the max if we're setting the pattern all the way back so seven ten and a half the joints got at least three inches so we can make the block safely six inches wide and not not have it run into r2 and uh, we don't want it to run into the keelson so I said two and a half inches from where we think this edge will be and we'll stop it <clears throat> where 20 inches falls so basically 17 and a half inch block set two and a half inches up up the hill from the keelson and we'll cut those out of some scrap pieces and uh, if it warms up enough today might try to glue them on 17 and a half two six inch pieces Cut this tail off, take it to the table saw. So there's our two backing boards or blocks. And one last decision is whether we should show the bottom, which is what we'll be seeing from the rest of the whole plywood, or put the nicer piece up. I think we'll just show the bottom and <clears throat> make it blend in as best we can. I'm going to bevel the edges and try to finish it up a little bit. Just kind of Take successfully got the uh, sheets maneuvered without breaking this joint yet uh, so that we can work them on the back side <clears throat> and we got decent little finished edge on these backing blocks easier to do now than later and laid out uh, this this joint runs about an inch and a quarter so we want our backing block to be centered over that two and a half inches in from the edge and we're going to actually try to use this from the stern forward um, as a straight edge it just starts to curve somewhere in here so we can safely measure off that edge two and a half inches in and have it not conflict with anything in there so we'll see about the attempts coming up enough to glue this and the other thing I remember doing, it's uh, because I've got limited space, it's nice to glue them both at the same time. But when you put something down on another, another piece, you can't see that sometimes the glue will squirm around. So I'm thinking what I may do is put hot glue at the corners uh, after laying this guy in place, then wax paper, then lay the other one on top of it and clamp across the whole thing. I think that probably will make sure this guy doesn't squirm underneath when we can't see it to fix it. jobs that sure would be easier with two people but uh, you see how that that had slid off its marks I think I got it back on and hopefully the uh, hot glue on the corners of the one underneath kept in in position so let's see if we can keep the shop warm all right well the um, backing blocks it was a bit of a fight with the colder temps, but I uh, kept the heater on it, and uh, they didn't move. Uh, this one, as I was clamping it, did shift a little bit, but it was the top one, so I could see it. So I'm sure if I had not done the hot glue 
on these corners so it's maneuvering the other piece on top of it this guy would have squirmed around as well that's on to the boat first time breaking it move it points along there. Do that to the other side and then start wetting and tying down the bow because I don't want to precision cut very far forward until we really see how those curves are going to lay uh, because you know you lose a little wood that's a problem. So I think that's what I'm going to be doing. Every time it gets moved on and off position uh, even the tiniest adjustment to where it sits can make a big difference so I'm going to try this time, I haven't done this before, like I said, is drill a little hole. And each time on and off, eventually maybe get another one up around F3. Uh, as we uh, just kind of lock it into a single, a single locator spot. See if that helps. More like a boat? <laughs> it came out pretty good. Yeah. Fell right where we wanted it. Not intersecting our tube, but underneath the seat, so it's out of the way. Uh huh. Look. Say hi. Say hi. A high boat camera. All right, worked up along here, got a second position in. This is where this rabbit plane, where the blade comes right up to the edge, is particularly handy. Just lay it down with this, gives me the bevel. I took the dividers. Slid them up against the shine and drag the, drag the line along. So we'll go ahead and cut eh, maybe a half inch. Did you find some more sticks? Oh, are you breaking them too? That's good. Here, throw you it. You try to throw it? You're gonna give it to Pop to throw? Here. Still pretty happy with the result here. I'm getting it clamped and dampened and just I'm stretching that plywood. So when we go to glue it on and 
clamp and screw it in place, it's not too much stress on the frame pulling it out of out of shape. That uh, center cut is almost right. Probably have to trim it a little bit. Um, but I think we're really close to being able to install this stuff. Temperatures provided. It was a little tough finding a way to clamp down the Kielsen area. But this ended up working. Those big clamps across the top. And then these guys, again, try not to stress the frame, let it have its shape, but still pull that plywood down. And uh, obviously we will trim this a little bit closer uh, so it stays out of its own way. But that's getting mighty close. And I'm liking the shape of it, pretty happy with that. Uh, enjoy getting to come out and take a break and push this project forward a little bit, but it's cold again. Got the new heater going as well as the old little one. I think what I'm going to do, a little bit more trimming of this uh, nose here so we're in place to put this up. And two little things uh, need to get done before I can actually consider installing the bottom. I'd like to fill in this with uh, some epoxy on both of the scarf joints on the outside. Uh, so we can sand it smooth and it, it's better done when it's laying flat obviously. I want a big pool of epoxy between masking tape. And uh, we need to remember to put some wax paper over F3 because we're going to have the inside of this plywood completely uh, with a roll of coat of epoxy on it. doesn't run off the edge of that masking tape, that would be all right. One other thing I realized is uh, the curve that we have on R2 here is pretty close to what the plywood was doing, but it wasn't quite contacting. It's going to take some force, I think a screw, during the clamping process. And this plywood doesn't is not great at taking a screw, let alone the difficulty in hitting it with a screw. So I made these little guys, and uh, I'll install them a little bit high. We can plane them down to the bevel. On the shop here. Uh, Managed to get this to cure, even though it's right now down in 30, about 38 degrees in here during the night. I was able to keep it up a little bit more. And uh, so our little filler strips seem to have cured. And uh, put the wax paper on F3 to prevent it from getting glued down. And I'm thinking about trying the bottom on to uh, prepare for installation. See how much slop there is just moving it around. Starting right about here, I'm going to try to cut um, close to the middle of that stringer. I've satisfied myself that we're going to see a little bit of the chine. I'm just scared to really try to cut perfectly to the center, knowing that as you clamp things on all the way down, it can shift, and I don't want to end up short. I think we're I've done everything we can. We're ready to glue on. Here we go.
that's going to have to be hopefully good enough. Well, I think it's in the proverbial good enough zone. Look along here. This laid so nicely. Got these temporary screws that I use as clamps where it's really hard to get clamps. Uh, it's a pain. Pain to fill the holes later when the screws come out. I use brass just in case I can't get them out, uh, but they're not very strong. So, up here where it's really torquing, I use the uh, pocket screws. And uh, I think, other than the difficulty in carving this exact line after the fact, we can go back to the simple method from here. I think it's pretty good.